This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Welcome to Talk of the Town, I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests are both here to talk about events at Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. I have Katie Wolf and Allie Elliott. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Katie, I'll start you out. You brought Allie today as a special guest, so tell yes. us why she's here. Well, she's very special for one. Okay. <laughs> she's a wonderful fifth grade teacher at Besser Elementary. And um, her class, so the fifth grade class at Besser Elementary, partnered on a really special project that comes to fruition with the Seasons of Light at the Besser oh, Museum. Yay. But I'll let Allie explain the history of it because it's a really cool, perfect project of how you want your child to be able to learn in school. Okay, Allie. So um, we decided our ornaments that we decorate for the Besser Museum to be um, related to our new schoolyard habitat that we have at, our, at Besser Elementary School. So we started the schoolyard habitat with um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Heather Rawlings um, introduced this program to me um, through the Northeast Michigan Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative. Um, we decided to plant these native pollinator plants at Besser Elementary School um, in the, teach the children how important native pollinator species yes. are and why they help our local ecosystem, our butterflies and bees and hummingbirds. Um, and so in doing this Besser Museum Christmas tree program, um, the students were able to do more research on the native pollinator species. And Learning while having fun. Yeah. yeah. So it sort of gave them this ownership of this is my plant, this is the plant I'm doing research on. And you were able to see a real photo of the plan and draw a picture of it, um, write some information on the back of their ornament to teach our community about our native pollinator plants. Um, and it, it ended up really, the kids had a lot of fun with it and um, it sort of brings our schoolyard habitat full circle. Wonderful. Yeah. So there were lots of partners in the project. Right. You want to mention the partners? So we, again, we worked with U.S. Fish and Wildlife first off. Um, we received a grant from the Wild Ones um, for our native plants. Um, when we planted this in the front of the school, it was originally just grass. So we had to excavate the mm -hmm. topsoil, um, bedrock excavation, came in and dug up the topsoil um, and we also had DTE partner with us um, here on Pines. AmeriCorps members helped us out as well um, and we also had parent volunteers come in and help us plant the plants. Yeah. Wonderful. So the Friends comes in um, with um, the friends for the past couple years, they've sponsored classrooms and teachers and helped with the supplies and things they need to decorate the tree. And, um, and then this is really a passion of our board president, Chuck Wieson and his wife, Julie. And so then they also help decorate the tree. And it's a way to take a conservation message and bring it into the Christmas spirit so that when people are decorating the tree, they can think of things that they can do that are actually compatible with the environment. Last year's the theme was plastics, and this year it's on the native plants uh -huh. and you know bee pollinators or butterfly, hummingbird, you know pollinator plants, which is really an important thing right now because we, you know, they're. Um, in jeopardy in our country. Another important thing is that you get to the rest of your list because we only have four <laughs> minutes left and we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> so we, this was really, um, so we're moving into the end of the year and it's our giving cycle. So many of our friends members would have received a mailing in the past few weeks. It's a really important time of year for us to get people to renew their membership and build up so that we can support programs like yes. the one that Allie's talking about. But also we've got some really fun programs and these are all free. And these are the types of things why it's important to support the friends. Yes. So we have the ROV open house. So the ROV, that's a remotely operated vehicle. It's another word for an underwater robot. So we're gonna have an open house and that's coming up on December 16th. 
and it's from 10 to 5, and the whole family is welcome to come. And they and actually get to build a little they ROV to, in a box. They get mm -hmm. to build the ROV, and then they get to test it in the uh, indoor water tank. Perfect. And so part of that is to bring attention to our Mate ROV competition that will be May 12th. Okay. And we're trying to, for fifth graders, um, and their parents were looking for uh, fifth graders to form teams as well as parents to coach. So it's a great way to test it out and see if that's something you'd want to do with your Perfect. child. So the next thing that's on the agenda um, is this is coming up on Monday night, which I think is really cool. It's called the Sky Worn Weather Spotter Training. Yes. And we have a meteorologist coming in from NOAA, and he'll be at the sanctuary from 6 to 830. And you go through this training, and then you become a certified weather spotter and it, it's part of keeping our community safe from severe weather. Okay. So that's a really cool project. And then as we move toward the holidays, we have a program, it's called The Christmas Tree Ship. Many people know that yes. book, it's a wonderful book. And so we'll have a special reading of the book, the students will make ornaments, and then they'll learn about our uh, maritime history. And they'll be able to see different artifacts or things, remains of shipwrecks at the museum and learn about how that has to do with our history. Perfect. And it's, there's always so many things going on. And remember for your Christmas giving list to come mm -hmm. to the sanctuary store. Right, absolutely, and especially uh, we will be getting all new, a lot of new inventory in right after Thanksgiving. So if you haven't done your holiday shopping, that's a great time to come to the store. And I do want to just mention that um, Giving Tuesday oh, yes. is November 28th, and it's so easy to support all the nonprofits in the community. You just go to the Community Foundation of Northeast Michigan's website, just cfnem.org. Yes. And I think there's probably over 50 different organizations, but we sure hope that you will think about the sanctuary because we're very dependent on that event to help fund our education programs. Okay, well, I really hope people will do that. And you brought a, a couple of pictures here today. Yeah. Allie, we may have time I to did. show a couple things. Um, so I have some pictures of the very beginning of planting the schoolyard habitat okay. here. So these are my students from last year okay. that um, planted our native pollinator right. species. Um, that's the front of the school at Besser Elementary School. You can see it right now. And um, this will also be at the Besser Museum oh, okay, on display. Good. And I also have a couple examples of their ornaments. You probably have enough time to show a couple real okay. quickly. <laughs> So they drew their native plants on these ornaments. Oh, You'll very nice. You'll see those nice. on the tree in the Western Museum. And then on the back, you can read more information about the plant. Oh, those are very nice. Yeah. So if people are interested in planting yes. a garden with native species, this, it would be great to go to the Buster Museum Season of Light and check out this Christmas tree. Okay. Thank both of you very much for being here, Thank and you. happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, and I hope to well, see you soon. You. Thank we'll you so much. You. I'll be right back with Betty Krug from Pinecrest Academy following these messages. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Betty Krug, and we're here to talk about Pinecrest Academy. Good morning, Betty. Hi. Now, I know you were here a while ago, and we talked about Pinecrest Academy, but why don't you start out by filling us in um, about you and why you're doing Pinecrest Academy? Well, um, over the years, I've, I've changed it kind of drastically, I've decided to go online. And in doing that, because I specialize in ADHD and dyslexics, I have decided that it, I had to develop a program that worked for the hands-on uh, project-based program that I have. Ah. So I've uh, found that virtual worlds, uh, which are kind of like you know, the kids would know them through gaming and stuff sure. where you have an avatar and you go in and you uh, uh, communicate just like you would anywhere else, but your avatar is representing you. And now this is for your PhD? Uh, for my PhD, I'm kind of doing a pilot program. It's actually, I am testing to find out what the significance of including an orientation before the students go into the classrooms in, in Second Life and, and are actually taught that way. And especially for the ADHD and dyslexics, whether it is a big improvement or other than just going in the natural way into a virtual world and kind of learning on your own. Well, not being a virtual world kind of person, but I would think that that would be much easier for a dyslexic or an ADHD person because you're right there, you have the total attention, you have your screen in front of you and everything's right there one-on-one. -on -one. 
Yes, and the thing is, you can do this from anywhere. So the kids can do it from home or a learning center or, or a community spot or a library. And if they travel with their parents, they just have to be able to get online. So now would it be like grade school, junior high? I mean, what kind of um, curriculum would it be? Well, my, my school is K through 12. Okay. Uh, but at the beginning, um, I will probably be more junior high and high school. Okay. Uh, it's my school tends to be that just because the problems usually hit in late elementary uh, you know they may not know that these kids are and part of uh, these kids only have to be self-reporting which means they have to uh, you know maybe a teacher or a parent or they've taken some tests online and we also provide one um, as they're coming into the program because for the PhD again I am doing the um, the orientation and uh, we're testing both the virtual world with my you know uh, program mm -hmm. which is a science program connected with it for a couple of weeks okay now how do kids sign up well you just have to contact me uh, either on Facebook and Pinecrest Virtual Academy is on Facebook okay. or it can um, be my name Betty Klug or K-L-U-G okay. Klug or Klug and uh, or you can call me at 989-728-6490 um, and the email is mklug2 at capellauniversity.edu Okay, so what are you, what kind of a time frame are you in right now? Well, what we need is, well, I'm supposed to have this, this part of the study done by the mid-December. Okay. So I am running, I've got a couple um, sessions running right now, but I definitely need more students. And this is a good way to try out what my school is going to be like, too, uh, for free. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's a total of requirement over a two to three week period, depending on what session they're okay. in, of 20 to 40 hours okay. uh, over a two to three week period. And they'll be required to spend five days a week, a period of, of two to two and a half hours during this time. And, um, and the classes will be held in the virtual world. And uh, there will also be assignments connected with uh, some of the book work and possibly, you know, they, and we have a great program where, where you can hand your work in through Facebook, through, uh, through Second Life, wow. through other, um, multimedia groups so we're very flexible so now are you doing this all yourself basically my husband is my tech person okay so he's helping out and then I've had a lady who whose child went to my school uh, years ago and she's my executive secretary so so I have a little help right now but Perfect. but not much so now um, if someone's in school right now, um, going to a traditional school, can they still participate? Oh, yes. Yes. You don't have to even be in school. They could have dropped out or just not finished. The only requirement is that they are high school. Um, preferred 16 to 20. Uh, sometimes I can take 13-year-olds, but we've been having a little difficulty with the virtual world, okay. accepting them at the younger age. And they... Um, we prefer they didn't have biology, but if they did, I'm finding that there's so much difference in biology that I'm not finding hardly any of them having the particular two-week session we're doing. Oh, okay. And then, um, so after you get this up and running, will kids from basically all over the world will be able to? Yes, and I actually have inquiries already from other parts. I have even had a teacher from another country want to teach for me. So, oh, wow. and, I'm, and I'm hiring teachers, <laughs> so it's a very unique way. Now, students and teachers need to have a very good computer, gaming computer preferably, but just a good computer and high-speed internet. That was going to be my next question, is what kind oh, of, you know, what do you need at home to be able to participate? So good high-speed internet, so dial-up internet is not... Would probably not do it. Okay. Um, the, the local internet in the areas uh, are fairly good. Some of them will probably have some lagging if they're a little slow. Uh, but now there's a lot of them that are better, so they're doing pretty good. So once you get your PhD, you're going to have this up and running then? Oh yes, yes. I actually, this is this fall. I'm already got a pilot program going. This is kind of the pilot program for the start of the school too. Oh, perfect. I actually have some some students right now. 
Now, how many semesters do you have? How does that work? Um, it's pretty much the same as okay. a public school, except that I have maybe longer breaks. It's, it's set up a little more like a college. Okay. And we have like 10 week periods. And because it's a project based school, it's not as uh, uh, like things can, t can go over into the next okay. term or can cross over into other, like I, I, you might have math and English and, 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 and journalism or something like that all mixed together and your assignment pops from one to the other. Okay, we have one minute left, so tell us again how to get in touch with you. Okay, you can contact me on Facebook at Pinecrest Virtual Academy or my name, Betty Klug, K-L-U-G, or you can uh, also call me 989-728-6490 or email mklug2 at capellauniversity.edu. Okay, thank you very much, Betty, and good luck. I hope you get all those students that you need. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning, Kathy Abraham, director of the ACC Volunteer Center. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. McMaster. Yeah. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So uh, you have a, a, a number of activities, but one central one going on right now, and that is Christmas Wish and you want to get a word out to folks about that activity. Yes, we have officially kicked off the Christmas wish list. It's a charitable program that we have, it's been a tradition for in the, within this community for 39 years now. And we match up donors with children's that are, the names have been submitted through the schools or agencies. And uh, right now we have a lot of the recipients that have been matched with generous donors, but we still have names that have not been fulfilled. So we are hoping that more uh, calls will come in and we'll have more donors for those recipients. Very good. So describe uh, the process if uh, a donor wants to participate. How would they do that? They could contact the center on 358-7271 and if they have a preference, if they want a single child or a family or a, a certain gender, I would match them up. Many times we have families that contact me and they will uh, be matched with a family or two or three individuals. A donor family? A donor family, yes. Okay. And um, if uh, we have co-workers that pool their funds together and they'll contact me and we match them up with whatever they choose. Uh, a male, female, a family, one or two child, a single, whatever their preference is. So at this point we don't quite have enough donors to match the uh, the the number of kids to receive gifts who or who have been indicated that they could use gifts. gifts. Every year we receive submittals and this year we had 425 and we have been able to match the majority of them. We still have around 125, 130 names that need to be matched with donors. So we got about a quarter, we got about 75% of the way there yes. and we need to get that last 25%. Right, and we appreciate our community, we appreciate our donors, we just have to get a couple of those out. Mm -hmm. Is there a deadline when a donor, you know, really has to say, okay, I gotta get this done today? Well, they have until the end of the month. We have a gift receiving week, and that is December 4th through the 7th. During that week and only that week, our donors will drop off their gifts from the recipients that they've been matched with. So we have until like the end of the month, but that first week that we have to have those gifts received because then we have another process that we have to go through on our side. Okay. So the donors actually go out and buy the gifts and bring them to you? Right. Okay. And if they choose not to shop, but they do want to become a donor, we receive, we accept cash donations, and anything that's left on that list, we will go out and purchase those. So each child will get one, but we really like to have them matched with donors. Wonderful. So if a donor is housebound or for some reason maybe not local, um, and they can't actually go and buy a gift for their, um, for their child, 
um, you could handle that or somebody in, uh, at, on the ACC staff. Right. Our volunteers will come in and uh, anything that's there, yes, we will go out and purchase the items that are needed. Wonderful. Yeah. And you reference donor recipient yes. uh, week. Now that's, that's pretty neat. I've walked by Center 106 and seen it in the past. Yes. That, is packed with gifts. Yes, we have hundreds and hundreds of gifts that will go back and we deal with third parties. So um, we will uh, have a pickup or delivery and they will go back to the third parties at which time they deliver those to the families. The donors are anonymous, I am anonymous. We never will meet these recipients. So it's all an anonymous uh, program, a charitable program. Wonderful, so folks, uh, if you're uh, intending to be a donor, give Kathy a call and, uh, and help out the remaining 120 or some odd kids who, who don't have a donor yet, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, well, let's t we got about three minutes left, um, and there's a lot of things that are going on with the Volunteer Center. I um, I'm, uh, uh, would like to ask you to, to uh, talk about the website that you have that, that aggregates uh, volunteer activities in the community. Could you speak to that? Yes, we created a, or manage a website. It's been rolled out for about two years now. And this website actually matches nonprofit agencies that are looking for volunteers with potential volunteers. So if we have an individual that wants to do volunteer and they really don't know what they want, they can visit our website and we list all of the nonprofit agencies that are looking for volunteers or a need, have an event coming up, and it is free to those nonprofit agencies. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And if a person needed the help that one of those agencies provides, they could access that that way too. Exactly. We basically um, have our website where a person can go review everything. Once they click on that nonprofit agency's icon, it will direct them to their site and it'll give them information on what they need, what they're looking for, their hours, and their mission statement, whatever that may be. Very interesting. Any idea how many people in the community access that? We have, it was over um, 600 hits that we had last year. Really? And we have about uh, just over almost 20 nonprofit agencies that are utilizing it. But again, it needs to get out there. Anyone that's interested, the website is the Alpena Volunteer Center dot org. And it's and it's linked to alpenacc.edu, ACC's webpage? Yes, it is. Okay. They can go into the, the um, visitors and then look at our community education, scroll down, and there's links right there that'll take them to that website. Wonderful. Yes. What a great service. Um, and uh, that's partly supported by the Besser Foundation, correct? Yes, it is. That is correct. And uh, could you, we got about 45 seconds left. Could you speak to their uh, support over the years and what we think about it? Well, the Besser Foundation, without their funds, we, our department would, I mean, they are sub substantial. Uh, they s support this volunteer center, so we are very grateful. And through their funding, it allows us to provide services through this community, such as the community education, the volunteer center's website, and uh, the Christmas wish list. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Besser Foundation. Thank you, folks, for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your host, Nancy Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.